Welcome to the Counselors of Real Estate's Top 10 in 10 podcast series. In these 10-minute episodes, we'll discuss one of the prevailing 2021-2022 Top 10 issues affecting real estate. I'm your host, Jonathan Shine, Counselor of Real Estate and CEO and Executive Director of the Real Estate Limited Partner Institute. Counselors of real estate are trusted advisors, finding solutions to complex real estate challenges. Experienced, innovative, and credentialed problem solvers, counselors practice in 21 countries and offer expertise in more than 60 real estate disciplines across all asset types and classes. Each has earned the prestigious CRE designation. Our guest for this episode is Dr. Hugh Kelly, CRE, Principal of, and Principal of the Consultancy, Hugh Kelly Real Estate Economics in New York, and Chair of Fordham University's Real Estate Institute's Master's Degree Curriculum Committee. He served as Global Chair of the Counselors of Real Estate in 2014. Hugh authored the narrative supporting the number eight issue on this year's compilation of Tom 10 Issues Affecting Real Estate, Economic Structural Change. Welcome, Hugh. Hey, Jonathan, it's good to see you, and I'm glad to be here. Good to see you as well. So it looks like 67% of the Commercial Real Estate Finance Council's Board of Governors expect the economy to perform better over the next 12 months. However, that number is down from 88% a few months ago. What do you think? Well, with all due respect to CREFSI, which, uh, which is a wonderful organization, those numbers are no more than a guess. Uh, nobody really has a clear picture uh, sure. going forward. And I think, you know, as an economist, uh, I recognize that as something that we always have to deal with, but it's even more true now. Let me just tell you why I think that uh, that is the case. And sure. yeah, I don't know if you can see my, uh, my share screen here, uh, but uh, it's the vaccination rates that worry me. COVID by far is a great wild card in our economy domestically and globally. Uh, I'm sad to say that I think we're going to be up to about a million deaths in the United States by this time next year. Uh, the disruption that we've suffered uh, since early 2020 shocked our systems to an unprecedented uh, degree. And after the plunge and after the double digit uh, rebound uh, in the third quarter of last year, we settled into about a five or six percent uh, GDP growth quarter by quarter. Uh, but the third quarter of 2021 came in at about 2%. And actually, 2% is about what we were running pre-pandemic. So if we want to get back to normal, that's kind of normal. And it's also what the long-term sustainable growth rate for the economy is over the course of the coming decade. Uh, so Crefsi is right in the sense of an expected continuation of growth but at a slower pace than in the uh, past 12 months taken as, uh, uh, as a whole. Now, I'd like to just shift over uh, uh, and uh, put up another slide, uh, which is uh, uh, the personal income growth that we've seen in the COVID era. Uh, it's the in limbo status of the Build Back Better Act that, that I think is the, the real wild card beyond COVID. The stimulus of the CARES Act uh, during the Trump administration uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, American Rescue Plan last spring accounted for the above trend growth that we've seen in the economy because it boosted U.S. incomes. Now, if the Build Back Better uh, Plan is reconciled, between the Senate and the House, somewhere in between Joe Manchin's $1.5 trillion preference and um, uh, the uh, $2 trillion that was passed in the House, I'd expect our growth to be at about the 3 or 4% range next year. That's not sustainable, but that's a year's outlook. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's kind of move on to... Uh, uh, to real estate. Yes. You know, um, a slide for that or, you know, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Okay. Uh, there are those who say that I really can't, uh, talk without slides. Uh, but uh, maybe in the, the next podcast, we'll, we'll try to disprove that, you know, okay. real estate has had an abundant amount of capital, both on the debt and the equity side. 
for uh, uh, for most of the last few years. Sure, there's been a huge surge in capital for uh, for real estate. The NACRE portfolio now is standing at about seven hundred and eighty-five billion dollars. And that's up from less than $520 billion in 2017. Uh, uh, the uh, the NAREIT portfolio, the, the equity index, is up 50% from 2017. I mean, it's huge, right? Sure. And, and, this, and this year's uh, uh, year-to-date number from, from Bob White in Real Capital Analytics uh, uh, is about uh, $525 billion through October, which puts it on a pace possibly to set a new record this year. So there's an abundant amount of, uh, of, of capital. Meanwhile, you know, on the residential side, home prices have gone through the roof. You know, and, and so to me, real estate has the fuel of, of, of capital. My inflation worry actually is more in asset pricing than it is in CPI, uh, and uh, here's uh, here's why. Uh, you know, I tend not to look at month to month fluctuations or quarter to quarter fluctuations in economic data as much as what the longer term trends are. And we've had a very disciplined approach to uh, inflation now, uh, well into its twenty fifth year, and I think it's that that longer run discipline that's going to stand us in good stead going, uh, uh, going forward. Uh, so while everybody is watching you know, what's going on at the, uh, at the gas pumps uh, uh, and at, at the grocery store, it helps us to bear in mind that inflation is not a U.S. problem. Inflation is a global problem. Europe, the U.K., Germany, the Netherlands are all suffering from inflation beyond ours. Uh, there is a supply uh, shortage that runs from the Pearl River Delta in China to the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. And that cost push inflation more than demand pull inflation from the stimulus bills, uh, uh, I, I think is accounting for the short term fluctuations in, in prices. I think that that gets corrected in the next 12 months. Okay, well, no, thank you for that. And let's, uh, let's go back to our interview without the slides. That, sure. That's workable. Now, you brought up a couple of very interesting points. Stop, and, share. Yes. And so what we're talking about is something we had not had in the lexicon for at least 20 years, which is inflation. Right? It's, not, it's not been a concern. We've been worried about overpricing. Except for Paul Ryan. <laughs> so... You want to say that again? Except for Paul Ryan. Okay, yeah. Well, he, he may have been onto something. So let me ask you something, getting back to real estate. As long as there is economic demand, there will always be real estate demand. So over the past few years, real estate has demonstrated resi- resilience and adaptability in that environment. Considering the current levels of inflation, transitory or not, do you foresee these characteristics continuing? Will it be a resilient asset class? <sighs> I think yes. I mean, so, so I'll, I'll be be clear about uh, about that. Uh, does that mean that it will not have downside risk? The answer is it certainly will have downside risk. Um, uh, you know what? You know what do we mean by resilience? What we mean by resilience is the ability to absorb and recover from shock. Uh, And in that sense, it presupposes that there will be shocks. So I think think that that where uh, the demand side of real estate uh, comes from, and I'm used to separating for discussion purposes, although they're not just separated in the real world, for discussion purposes, user demand and investor demand, right? So on the user demand side, it really is the public health issue that uh, if people become comfortable 
with uh, uh, with the safety of returning to their activities at, at work and at leisure, then real estate user demand will do well. You know, will it be exactly the same as pre-pandemic? No. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're adjusting. On the, so, so I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic that the trajectory of the U.S. economy will sustain that. Okay. Well, the risk on the, uh, on the investor side is that we have an extraordinarily thin, and I would say uh, too thin, margin of risk premium in our capitalization rates and particularly in our commercial mortgage rates. Right now, according to, to, to my, my latest analysis, the risk premium in mortgage rates stands at about the 30th percentile of all risk premiums that we've seen in the last 35 years. That's pretty big. So we're not being paid adequately for the risks that we're taking. And uh, Jonathan, you're old enough, as I am, to remember uh, in 2006, emerging trends in real estate had its headline chapter as, as long as the capital keeps flowing, it's going to be okay. Wow. 2006. 2006. I so that well, it was a good year until it yeah. was. So, so now the question is, will all of those capital flows that I, I showed in that graph, will they continue or will they begin to contract because people are not being paid enough for the risks that they're taking? And that's why I think asset price inflation is, uh, is where we have some fragility. All right. But, you know, we've seen over time and time again, real estate does maintain uh, its value over time. And so I want to thank you, Hugh. Uh, the real estate Can sector- Can I just want one other thing going oh, back even further course. in history, even further in history. You know, when, um, when NACREF was formed in the late 1970s, there were certain virtues that real estate was supposed to bring to mixed asset investors. One clearly was diversification, right? And it was uh, that uh, that uh, met the ERISA needs, right, mm-hmm. for prudent expert investing. But the other thing that it was supposed to bring was inflation protection. It's Can true. You that? And the reason for that was that as inflation rose generally, uh, that the nominal prices of, uh, of real estate assets and real estate rents would begin to be repli- repriced to match the inflation. You know, and things like escalation provisions and commercial leases, common area maintenance charges for, for, for retail were all linked to current levels of price. So real estate we haven't thought about this in a very long time, but real estate has some mechanisms that that uh, uh, adjusts for inflation, and we should be doing okay as as a hard asset class in inflationary times. That's good to know, Hugh, and thank you. You know, the real estate sector is in a strong position to build its way out of this pandemic and take the economy with it wherever that is and wherever it goes. So all of the 2021-22 top 10 issues are highly interconnected and indicative of a changing and evolving real estate landscape. We're grateful for your knowledge and contributions to this year's report. Join us next time for another discussion of one of the top 10 issues affecting real estate. I'm Jonathan Shine on behalf of the Counselors of Real Estate. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Top 10 in 10.